This is Talk Business and Politics with Roby Brock. I'm John Brummett, substituting today for Roby Brock, who uh, is unfortunately voiceless. I don't mean metaphorically, I mean he actually is without a voice today. He's had some physical ailments, uh, but he'll be back soon. And in his place uh, is uh, a, an emerging conservative icon of Arkansas, State Representative Charlie Collins, uh, who is here to, at my invitation to talk about uh, the big gun issue. And uh, appreciate you coming. Thank you very much, John. I'm glad to be here. Uh, I tried to, uh, I called you dangerously competent uh, in the column study, and, and you thank me for it. Well, I, uh, I always look for uh, the compliment inside the poke, and uh, I appreciate your recognition of my competence. What about the dangerous part? Do you ignore that, or, you, or did you uh, accept it? Well, that has dangerous? more to do with our point of view on issues. Uh, you tend to be more of a liberal persuasion. I'm more of a conservative persuasion, so I just take that as uh, part of what we have to deal with together. Okay, let's talk about the gun thing. Uh, you started out to allow faculty and staff to carry on campus with concealed carry licenses. 16 hours of training were added by amendment. Students age 25 were added by amendment. The NRA came in and you, you and others, Jim Hendren, went into deep negotiations with uh, the NRA for a week. I guess what I want to ask you, and I, it's okay to get run over by the NRA, they're a powerful lobby. But in the negotiation, what has emerged last week and now appears headed for passage, did you get run over by the NRA? Yeah, I, I think the notion of being run over by the NRA is, is, is way out in left field because the reality is the people of Arkansas, uh, I think, believe in this issue. Uh, the poll done by Roby Brock had uh, over 60 percent were in favor of college campus carry. So I think what we're talking about and what we have been talking about is something that the people of Arkansas support. But, but if we go to the central issue, you know, what's different now versus what I have been constructing, uh, kind of by myself, if you will, over the past several sessions, not just this session. And the real difference is, uh, when I started out, I was building a solution which was very narrowly focused on what can we do to help keep our loved ones safe on college campuses in Arkansas. And my thought process was, I love the concealed carry program, the Arkansas State Police do a great job with it, but historically those uh, weapons have been banned, concealed carry holders have been banned on college campuses. How can we get to a place where we can move that forward? Because if we can get some of those folks on campuses, I believe we can deter some of those crazy killers that murder our loved ones on campuses. So I set about constructing that, and the way I approached it was to select a class of people college uh, faculty and staff and the concept in my mind was those individuals were familiar with their surroundings others were familiar with them those types of things and that's how I arrived I know, at what but, I built I know, but, but since time is limited we got to the point the eventual solution is or the eventual bill after your negotiations with the NRA is a wider group of people authorized to use guns on campus uh, the 16 hours training which you were willing to accept cut to eight hours and now the use of concealed carry plus the eight hour training extends to many other places around the state. You know the NRA it appears uh, got you to agree to less training for much wider application of this authority. Is that essentially what and, and let me just also ask it this way. When you're negotiating in Arkansas for the NRA to try to pass a bill you're dealing with an organization that regularly scores legislators and gives them grades. And Arkansas legislators want their A grades. Those are vital, those are precious. So you're, you're negotiating from a, peri uh, from a position of weakness, aren't you? Because you cannot, get, you cannot go anywhere that would force your legislators to get anything less than an A from the NRA. Isn't that sort of where you were in those negotiations? So the negotiations were really among the people that are gonna make the decision in Arkansas, so senators, uh, the governor has a lot of influence in doing something that the people of Arkansas are going to support. Uh, so that's really always been the focus. Now, when you bring in people that care about gun rights and people that communicate to people about gun rights and the NRA's role in that, to the extent the voters of Arkansas care what anyone has to say, any outside group or whatever, that's the extent to which those organizations are important. But let me, let me get back to yeah, what but changed. But you do agree the, grade, the grading, the scoring by the NRA, 
of, of issues the, and what the, uh, what the NRA says of legislative action and legislative votes. That, that, that hung over the, uh, the, the discussions, the, did it not? The voters of Arkansas want to know the people they're voting for are in favor of certain things. And so many organizations uh, do things like mail their memberships right. and tell them how they feel about legislators' votes on different things. And to the extent that matters to individual voters when they go to the polls, uh, legislators pay attention and that doesn't just go for the NRA that goes for anybody it goes for anybody with a following if you've got a following of a million voters in Arkansas or 500,000 voters in Arkansas and you're gonna say these people agree with us these people don't and that can move voters then legislators will always pay attention to that we're doing that all the time professors told me you're not listening to the people I mean that was the mantra that that I heard in many of these town halls and it was the same concept they were saying I represent a certain okay. number of people and we're telling you we feel a certain way that's how democracy works but but here's what happened with this and, and the reason I'm so excited about it governor Hutchinson said uh, and he didn't use words like this but basically I'm not as excited about arbitrarily selecting a class of people and saying these people somehow are going to be more capable in a sensitive situation I from my experience as the NRA's uh, researcher and, and leader following the Sandy Hook uh, massacre have learned that training people and getting them qualified that's the way to do things and so what really changed when the bill got over to the Senate was how do we integrate that concept and use it to replace the little rickety thing that I had done that really applies in a very narrow way once we got that in place once uh, the, the governor's concept of training got in place, now all of a sudden, this bill is no longer as limited as it once was when I did it. And I think where we are today, not only is more expansive for the state of Arkansas, but it sets a tone for the entire country. And I believe now other states will follow the, what, what I believe will become the Arkansas model for how do we keep our loved ones safe in sensitive areas. Which is the better bill? The one you started with, which was, uh, conce which was carry rights for faculty and staff, or this one? This one, hands down. Okay, uh, we're gonna have to take a break. I've got a couple more questions on uh, the gun issue, and then if there's time, we'll talk a little bit about uh, congressional efforts on uh, health, uh, health care reform and how it fits into our Medicaid expansion. And so we'll be right back after this with Talk Business. Arkansas Electric Cooperative Corporation provides electric energy across two thirds of Arkansas. This is an exciting time in our energy history with incredible progress being made in renewable energy and storage technologies. As our energy portfolio continues to diversify, we'll maintain an all-the-above strategy to provide reliable and affordable electricity. Ever since the first light bulbs were placed in our members' homes, the electric cooperatives have been the solutions provider for our members, and we want to continue that well into the future. Each day, the promise of our nation begins again. Arkansas and America moving forward. I help make that promise a reality. It's not for everyone, but people everywhere depend on us. Trucking delivers or everything stops. And that's what drives me. Okay, I'm back. This is John Brummett with State Representative Charlie Collins talking about guns on college campuses and elsewhere. We were just talking, and I think you were saying, you may not have been saying, but I think you were saying, that Governor Hutchinson, by insisting on or advocating for a training component for special gun carry situations, had put Arkansas in sort of a national vanguard uh, in terms of how these issues will be handled. Do you think, are you saying less than that, or are you saying that much? No, I'm saying that much. That's my personal opinion. I think today, uh, the issue that I've been working to help solve in Arkansas which is protecting our loved ones on campuses, it's not an Arkansas specific issue. We're one of most states that really does not allow concealed carry on campus. And so these murderers are, are hitting schools all over the country and it's happening about monthly across the country. And I believe what we haven't had up to this point is a solution that works for lots and lots of states. Now there are some states, Utah, Texas, that have solved it uh, without using training. But I think in most states in the country, people will be more open to this idea of protecting our loved ones if we've got this, what, what, what Governor Hutchinson, I think, would lay out as the right way to qualify people in addition to the concealed carry permit. Now, there are many 
that don't agree with that. There are many that say, would say okay. that that's too much to ask of somebody with regard to their Second Amendment rights. But I think what we've struck in the amendment that's now okay. on HB 1249 is exactly the right balance to move forward, and I'm very excited about it. Let me ask you a more, uh, maybe a little deeper question. I understand your initial advocacy on this. Uh, whether I agree with it or not, I understand it. You have studied the, uh, uh, the psychological profiles of these mass shooting uh, people, and you have determined that they look for uh, easy places to pile up numbers to get their manifestos read. And you, you the whole point, uh, your whole point is if we, if we have people on campus who are armed, there will, th those folks will be deterred. They won't go to that setting. My question is, if they go anyway, if they're so crazy, they go anyway. Is it a better situation now to have great numbers of people in what, in, 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 in what could be a multi-weapon shootout than merely relying on police and security in that situation? I understand your deterrence, but in the event of an actual yes. happening, um, yeah, what yes. about that? Yeah, yes, I think the answer is yes, we're better off now. And the reason is because this is exactly the point the governor was making, which is in these sensitive situations, if, God forbid, something like this happens, the kind of training that we're talking about will better prepare people to deal with it. And that has to do with how do you behave if a bad guy draws a gun, how and can you role, role model, role play some of what you would react when law enforcement shows up on the scene. And a lot of the different things that people have brought up as question marks that perhaps are not covered in the base concealed carry training. There are other courses out there, lots of people do those on their own, but this will be mandatory to carry in sensitive areas. Uh, what this bill also does, John, is, is a lot of people uh, were, were calling me a hypocrite. They were saying, you know, geez, all you're focused on is college carry. If you think this is such a great idea, why don't you allow it in the Capitol? And, 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 and my... And so now it's allowed in the Capitol. Yeah, my bill really wasn't structured because you don't have college professors in the, in the Capitol, so it really wouldn't have worked that way. But by moving off of a class of people and moving onto a level of qualification, that's really what the governor brought to the table. We really have taken it to the point where there's no reason that we can't expand it to these other public buildings because now this additional training will prepare people. And, and I believe not just in Arkansas, but my hypothesis is as other states watch, they will copy. Do you feel good about a culture in which, we, not to personalize it, but in which we are, 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 you and your supporters, are happy to be facilitating the expansion and the number of guns, even to our seat of government? Uh, even if you think that under the circumstances that's best, do, do, do you feel good about that kind of culture that you confront, that, you, that you're addressing? Yeah, I, I think the problem is not uh, going away simply because we wish it away. I think there are bad people and they attempt to do bad things. Uh, I think concealed carry holders uh, as a group, and, and, and their uh, track record really suggests this, are extraordinarily responsible. They're the kind of folks that actually do the right thing again and again and again. And they're the kind of folks that are very diligent and have very few accidents. In my view, we are helping to move forward the good people of Arkansas and their ability to help reduce the negative impact of the bad guys and the evil people that are out there. So I feel good about where we're moving here and I'm, I'm happy the governor uh, really stepped in and ensured that we've got this kind of a more structural solution. Okay, uh, in the time we have left, the other big issue is uh, health care reform. And you are, to your, to your credit, in my view, you were one of the conservatives who early saw the, saw the uh, benefits, the wisdom of the private option, now Arkansas Works, form of Medicaid expansion. And you've championed it and I think had some influence in getting it done. Now, your party in Washington at least on the House side, proposing a health care reform bill that will cap the Medicaid expansion money, convert it to some sort of per capita or block grant, and reduce the money to the states like Arkansas that have expanded Medicaid. Does that worry you? Because you want, uh, I know you like the program, and I know you want to cut taxes, and Medicaid money helps us cut taxes. Uh, what about that? Are, are, are you worried about what the House Congressional... Uh, so, uh, the answer is I'm not worried. Uh, number two, I think we're just seeing the beginning of what is going to emerge from Washington, D.C. So, 
it is, in my view, too early to start jumping on any uh, one aspect of what's being proposed. Uh, you, you've heard our governor say that he's concerned that it doesn't go far enough in some areas. You've heard our senator say that he thinks that uh, maybe the House need to, may need to rework a lot of it. So I think right now we're in a position where there's going to be a lot of different okay. ideas shared. Okay. Uh, but Let's what go. I would okay, go ahead. The but what I would the central point, though, of the what American I would submit to you is the reason our program is so good is because it uses the marketplace and it uses worker style insurance approaches in a Medicaid scenario. And that concept, I believe, is a good concept for us to move forward with. You can do it via managed care in a group insurance approach, or you can do it via individual insurance policies. The private option does it with individual insurance policies, and I think that's much better than the fee-for-service program that we've used historically in Arkansas and Medicaid, which in my view is not nearly as effective or efficient as an insurance-based approach. So that's one of the reasons I love the private option so much. And I'm confident that whatever comes out of Washington, D.C., guess what? We're going to do the same doggone thing we did in 2013. Come out with the number one program of 50 states and watch the others copy what we're doing just like they did after the private option in 2013. You believe that after all is said and done, whatever Congress does, whatever the president signs, if something gets done and signed, that Arkansas will still be uh, using Medicaid in a, in a uh, imaginative, creative way that ensures more people more efficiently. Is that uh, what you're saying? Yes, I do. That doesn't mean that we may have fewer people on Medicaid in the future than we do today. And I also believe that block grants... It doesn't mean we may have fewer? Yeah, it doesn't mean that we may have fewer people on Medicaid in the future as a percentage of our population than we have today. Right now, we have something like one-third of the population of Arkansas on Medicaid. Do I think that's a good thing? Absolutely not. I don't think that's a good thing. We need to turn our state into a good jobs magnet so people can go to work and not rely so much on things like Medicaid. I also believe that a block grant is coming. When it happens, I don't know, but I believe that Washington is going to open the door for that, and I believe Governor Hutchinson is going to be one of the number one innovators with that block grant when we get it. Okay, and finally, the other thing you're most principally associated with is the, what you call the good jobs magnet of continuing to draw down our income taxes. You think we can uh, continue to pay for Medicaid and get that done and leave room for your continued incremental decreases in our income taxes? Yes, rates? I do. Uh, I do. Well, all right. I won't ask you to do the math right now next time we get together. Sounds Charlie, good. thanks for joining me. Uh, we've got to wrap it up. Uh, uh, John Brummett, happy to sit in for Roby Brock, and we'll see you next time.